serve in there. Um, and what I'm given in this case is an ICS file from the surveyor. And uh, so I'll, the first thing I'm going to do is just import the alignment that we're given. So we'll go to File, Import Geometry. We'll go to the ICS tab. And we'll browse to our ICS file, which is survey300.ics. We'll hit Open on that. And uh, we'll just hit the Preview button real quick to take a look at what is in this ICS file. I'll move it over. So here we have um, we have a geometry file that's been sent into us. It, it stores a bunch of points along the alignment, and then it stores a figure with some curves. And our problem our problem here is going to come in between these two curves. Here we have a curve to the right, another curve to the right, and we have a tangent piece in between here. And what our construction folks are telling us is that that tangent piece is causing a non collinearity, um, non tangent in the alignment. So we're going to import that in and see what we can do about fixing it. Um, we are told that we are going to be allowed to fit a third curve in here, so we'll have a three center compound curve in there, um, and that's what we'll that's what we'll end up doing. We'll hit apply on that, and our file is imported. Then we'll close that uh, report dialog, and we'll close that window. And we can see what's been imported into the drawing there. We have a tangent, a curve to the right, and then we have a piece here where there's a bust um, somewhere. And uh, it, we can't tell by looking at it necessarily. Uh, we can kind of look at it and tell that there is a, a uh, non-tangency there. Uh, just to verify that, though, we'd want to go to Geometry and then Horizontal Element and then Check Integrity. And we can look on the Check Integrity command and see that it is true. We have our linear, our circular, and then after this circular, we have a non-collinear element I'm out there. So what that's telling me is the bearings of the tangent and the bearings of the beginning of that curve are not matching. So we are going to have to do something to fix that. So we have a bus between this, this linear here, between these two circulars, is just is non-collinear. So we'll have to do something to fix that. And what we're being told um, that we are going to be allowed to place another curve radius in there. So we'll get out of the check integrity dialog there. And what we're going to do first is we're just going to delete that horizontal element there uh, that is causing the problem. So we'll go to geometry and then uh, horizontal element and then we'll delete element. We're going to delete the selected element. We'll hit apply. And then we'll just simply delete the uh, the problem element there. Now we have a discontinuity in, in the alignment there that needs to be fixed. We'll close out of the delete element command. Um, this type of problem can't be solved with the PI tools because the PI tools require that the uh, alignment be continuous. Um, and we have a discontinuity here. So we're told that we're allowed to um, fit in an, another curve there. So let's just review geometry review horizontal. Um, and look at the elements. We'll see our first element is a linear. We have a circular. This circular is a, a 1 degree 45 minute curve. Then our next circular is a 2 degree 30 minute curve. I and mean, what we're going to do is just fit a new curve in between there. And to do that, we're going to use the geometry horizontal element. And we're going to add free curve. The radius that uh, I'm going to choose to put here uh, for this curve is going to be a one minute, uh, I'm sorry, a one degree 15 minute curve. So to enter that simply in the dialog, all I have to do is enter in D1 1.25, which is a uh, 0.25 of a degree is going to be 15 minutes. So this is going to be a one degree 15 minute curve. As soon as I tab out, it'll calculate that radius for us. I would note here that we do have the design calc. Uh, button on here to uh, to calculate our radius if we needed to, but I knew that I wanted to put that one degree fifteen minute curve in there. So I'll hit apply on that, and I'm prompted down here in the inroads prompt window, inroads status bar, to identify the first element, and I'm going to fit my curve between the first curve and the second curve. And I can see that it's put in a solution for me, and it's asking me if I want to accept or reject that solution and I'll do a data point to accept the solution. And it's fit my curve in there. Now to review that, I'll want to, um, let's just do a view horizontal annotation real quick under geometry, horizontal annotation, 
and I just want to annotate the I really want to annotate the radials of this curve just to see what's going on there so I'm going to turn off points and I'm going to uh, radials and subtangents I'm going to annotate there to see that what it has done is it shortened uh, by placing that free curve it shortened the beginning and end element as it needed to it could have shortened or it could have lengthened them um, it fitted in there um, such that the geometry works out between the three curves. So I can see that I have three, uh, a three center compound curve there with varying radiuses uh, to make the geometry work out. And what I've done is I've held the uh, PC of the entire curve set and the PT of the entire curve set, which was a requirement coming to me from the construction.